that's the purpose of the vaccine is that it responds to the same stimulus mm -hmm. Ah, huh. did you get that from Tyler? I blog on his machine, found him in the emails, wrote him down. You're broadcasting, Scott, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so Don't say nothing. I'm saying, I'm going to say the name. You just said the name. <laughs> name. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Went through the emails. <laughs> Yeah. So have you got a name? Yeah. So he okay. they he ran through the uh, number generator. Okay, good. Pekka's on. So glad to see you again. And James, the astrophotographer. Good afternoon, everybody. Glad I'm finally joining live. We're we're glad of that too. Aaron Thompson's on. Good afternoon. Hi, Aaron. Oof. We're only 40 likes away from 10,000 likes on Facebook. There's more people that follow us than have liked us. I don't know what that means, but. There's more people that follow us than have liked us. I don't know what that means, <laughs> but. Oh, you got. Did you hear that? I got the TV on. That. I'm turning it down. <laughs> I just turn the TV on. <laughs> the YouTube is about nine seconds behind. Yeah. Mike Wiesner. Um, hi, everybody. We'll have to leave in a short while for a dentist appointment. Bummer. Aaron Thompson says that was a cool image posted to the MSRO Facebook page with the defocus Nova near Cassiopeia. Oh, I didn't see it. And mine must have posted that this afternoon or something or this morning, maybe. Mm -hmm. I have to look at that.
After imaging asteroid Bennu for the last time on April 7, 2021, OSIRIS-REx fired its thrusters on May 10th on its two-year journey to deliver asteroid samples to Earth. The uh, ADM burn has completed. We have a nominal ADM burn, and we're bringing the samples home. Beatrice is on. This burn thrust the spacecraft away from the asteroid at 600 miles per hour. OSIRIS-REx will then orbit the Sun twice before reaching Earth on September 24th, 2023. It will send the capsule containing pieces of Bennu through Earth's atmosphere to the Utah Test and Training Range, where it will be retrieved and taken to the curation facility at NASA's Johnson Space Center. These samples will be distributed to labs around the world for analysis for generations to come. Well, hello everybody. It's uh, Scott Roberts and Jerry Hubble here, and we are on the 151st episode of the Open Go To Community Live. Um, it's uh, it's been a good day today. Um, yep. A little surprise is that um, well, surprise to me, anyways. Uh, uh, Skies Up Magazine, um, uh, both uh, the printed version, which were we'll do in limited editions um uh but the online version as well has its own library of congress iss in number international standards uh type of number so uh that's very nice and allows people uh you know to search for it to, with the library of congress so that's that's totally cool mm -hmm. um Mike Wiesner says, Scott, you seem to have solved the video audio issues. Oops, did I just jinx it? <laughs> <laughs> it's only jinxed if Scott says it. <laughs> I know. Um, you know, it's, uh, yeah, it seems to be a lot better and we're getting natural sound out of the videos uh, that uh, that I run and that type of thing. So I'm, I'm happy about that. Um, the way I had to configure the machine was not very intuitive. Let me just say that. Okay. Um, there were, I, I watched a guru on YouTube set it up and he said, you just do this and you do that. And he's basically, he couldn't explain why, but he says, this is just the way it works. And so that that's the way it is. Um, so anyhow, um, it's, uh, um, you know, that's yesterday, I was going to that? say that that's where a checklist comes in handy. Yeah, and actually, <laughs> I did I did create one, so yeah. I did yeah. create one. That's but the reason even to with the one. checklist, um, what I should do uh, is do a test broadcast to another page. It's just a test page, which which I've started to do, and mm -hmm. um, it does help quite a bit. But before, like I could I could hear the audio myself on the uh, videos. Um, now I can't, I can't hear anybody but you, Jerry, or somebody talking to me through Zoom. But if I'm broadcasting a video, I can't hear it. Oh, so, yeah. mm -hmm. so I'm going to have to uh, see if I can figure that out because there are, you know, at times audio cues that, that help out. But uh, anyways, I'm, I'm glad that uh, the audio stuff is uh, working well uh, because it just makes very much more pleasing experience if you're an audience member. <laughs> so, That's right. Um, uh, we were, Jerry and I were talking earlier um, about, uh, um, you know, a, a new uh, change to the um, configuration tool, uh, universal configuration tool. But uh, before we do that, we did promise that we would announce the winner on the uh, 150th episode, which was last Tuesday, right? Right. Um, of the Open Go To community, and so, uh, so uh, uh, Jerry, what was the answer? Well, I'll give the question first. That way, people will that didn't catch it will understand the answer. 
Uh, and it, so the question was in approximately 1.2, probably 1.3 million years from now, uh, which star will pass the sun within 0.2 light years? So there's actually a star that will pass within 0.2 light years of the sun in mm. about a million years. And you, you, you looked up the Oort cloud and it will pass through the middle of the Oort cloud is what you mm. said, right? Right. Yeah. So it's going to disturb a bunch it's of really going to make an interesting time. Yeah. <laughs> It's going to disturb a bunch of comets. We may have more oceans than we ever uh, wished for. So who knows? That's right. So the answer is, is Gliese 710. G-L-I-E-S-E, -E, Gliese 710. It's also yeah. Hipparchus star number 89825. Okay. So who won? Mr. Starts with a J. Jeff Wise. Jeff Wise. Yay! Yay. <laughs> cool. Congratulations. So, so what uh, did he win? What did he win, Scott? What did he win, Bob? Uh, he won a $150 gift card from yeah. Explore Scientific and uh, uh, can be spent on anything that we have online. So That was to um, celebrate our 150th episode yesterday. That's or right. Tuesday, Tuesday. Yeah. I guess you could apply that towards the purchase of those of these really cool vino viewers oh yeah yeah so you can get in on the deal and apply your gift card and get these things for a very very sweet price so um we uh, uh we have some other new types of products coming up as well uh, that uh, Annie is going to talk about uh, the next time she comes on, I guess, Wednesday. So I'm not going to steal her thunder right now, but uh, but she's got some other things to show to uh, as kind of a sneak peek for Explore Alliance members. And, um, you know, we'll have a special price uh, for it. Um, you know, so I think a lot of people might like this. Um, yeah, make sure you, you join. Know. Make sure you join. The yeah, make sure Alliance. you join. That's right. That's right. Can't that's miss out on these nice, uh, these nice benefits. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's right. So we just try to keep it fun, you know. But um, and we have. I do need to mention too. We're going to be closed Memorial Day, uh, so there will be no broadcast on Memorial Day. So uh, you will, Doctor uh, Daniel Barth, uh, will come back on the next following. Not not uh, was it June first? I think would be. Uh, right? see, Monday, uh, Monday. Uh, no, it's, um, Oh, that, no, no, that's, it's the 31st, the 31st, the 31st of May. Uh, yeah. So that's right. 31st of May. Uh, we will not have a, uh, how do you know show? Uh, but it will, it will appear again on June, June 7th. That's right. So, And then the next day is my birthday. So, oh. you know, I've been wanting that new Ferrari, yeah. uh, you know, actually, I don't want a new Ferrari. I'd like, I'd like, uh, you know, one of those new Tesla trucks, I think is what I'd like. <laughs> the Cybertruck? I want a Cybertruck. Yeah. yeah I saw the announcement for the, the all carbon fiber edition, right? Yeah, the Ford Lightning was announced this past week. And I was looking at that. That's pretty interesting. Also. Oh, very cool. F-150. Yeah. So I don't know. Is Jeff Wise on on today's show? I don't. You would think uh, if he sent an answer, he would want to know if he won. Maybe he didn't want to jinx it. I guess. Yeah. Maybe he'll join a little bit. I don't know if uh, he, he can expect an email from Tyler. I guess probably telling him that he won. Yeah. Tyler's not here today. Yeah. Where is he? Where is Tyler? He he's a workaholic. He should be working every stinking day of the week and every the, stinking day of his life. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's you on know, I have vacation. I, I started to read an article and um, they were talking about the phenomena of what's happened with people who used to hate their jobs. Okay, and uh, you know. Uh, so it, it, the news article, I think it was published in Newsweek or something like that, but it talked about how um, 
people coming out of the pandemic have realized that they can now do, you know, they can modify their lives to have a job they want to do, you know, mm -hmm. versus a job they had to do, you know, right, and that's, right. that's not true for everybody. I know that, but, um, um, well, there's more and more opportunities. It just, you got, and sometimes you have to make your own opportunities. You really yeah. have to, to pursue things the best way you can. And then, and they'll pop up, they'll start popping up. Yeah. And so, you know, there's, um, you know, in our, you know, if you're, if you're an amateur astronomer and, uh, and you hate your real job, <laughs> Uh, there's, there's plenty of room to do all kinds of things. Um, some of my friends did things like, um, you know, bought a little piece of property and started up, uh, you know, an astronomy type of bed and breakfast idea. Oh, yeah. We had a guy at Mead Instruments. He was a uh, police officer. He did this on a very low budget. Um, he ended up buying, um, uh, property on, on near Julian, California, which is, you know, uh, in the mountains. And, um, and then he built a house and then he built a couple of little observatories and, uh, um, and he was, he was booked all the time. In fact, I think that almost, you know, as the pandemic lifts, you're going to see, you know, we're already going to expect a huge boom in, in travel. Oh yeah. Um, people you know, pent up, pent up need. Yeah. And, uh, I was, I get, um, uh, I get, uh, st statistics, uh, you know, an update every day in the mail, um, various different kinds of statistics. I don't know why I can't say that very well, but, <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> one of the things they talked about is as, uh, here in the United States that, you know, our, um, our COVID, uh, you know, new, new COVID, uh, 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 you know, infections are way down. How did that deaths are way down, you know, so, um, so it's, it's encouraging that, um, that we're starting to beat this thing. So, um, there, there are unfortunately still those that do get very ill and some of them are not making it through it. So, um, you know, it still makes sense. I know that masking laws and stuff are, are uh, being relaxed, but if you are at all concerned about anywhere that you go, you know, uh, just have a mask ready, you know, that's all. And um, that's that's about the best I can, right. I can say right now. Mike Wiesner says, the exceedingly bright headlights on new vehicles are becoming a major source of light pollution. They are also, they are also oh, blinding oncoming drivers. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's a pain. You It'd be to, nice if you had like a little rheostat. You could turn down the brightness level of your, or or the, uh, you know, if you have oncoming cars based off of distance, maybe the lights could get not as bright. You know, I think that would be nice. There's some. Uh, I'm sure there's some technology that can come along with uh, windows or with some kind of a view dimming system that would, you know. A selective yeah. area on this it'd be cool if there was a way to have a selective area on the on the windscreen be dimmer uh oh are you just see? well it it, it would be based or... on the geometry of your head you know where your eyeballs located looking out <laughs> it'd have a camera looking out yeah or you know it'd be some sophisticated technology that would look out at the lights and then could be able to calculate where that light is on your ret on, you know where you see it in the windscreen, basically where it passes through the windscreen into your eyeball or the, I guess that's an old fashioned term windscreen. It's a damn windshield. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's an air aircraft term. Windscreen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you know, that's, there's always ways to finagle math and science and technology to solve problems like that. Oh, yeah. So people can have fun coming yeah, up with Yeah, but if you ideas. had like a windshield like that and a stone came up and cracked it, like it almost happened to me today. Oh, really? You know? Yeah. That would be an expensive replacement, right? Yeah, it would. It would be very expensive. Yeah. That's but, why you uh, have a four The same token, everything's expensive on a car. You, you, well, then you'd you have, have a little fender bender. You know, it's right. like thousands to replace. Oh, yeah. That's how they make their money. 
Yeah. Spare parts. Spare parts. Yeah. Mike Wiesner says from where he lives, he can see bright headlights on vehicles 20 miles away. Yeah. Maybe those bright lights are like the Marfa lights, Mike, and it's not really cars. <laughs> Yeah. You don't know. <laughs> I well, mean, the other thing 20 I miles, it could be anything, right? Right. I had cataract surgery a few years, four or five years ago, and uh, your eyes become very sensitive. To It's really great in the dark. Okay. The stars with the, with the replacement lenses I got. But it's terrible when you're driving. I have to turn my head and look over. I look at the stripe on the edge of the road <laughs> to make sure I'm driving correctly. You I, just I look, drive by I the stripe? I look away from the lights. I have to look away from it. Now I have to wear, um, I wear sunglasses all the time outside. So because my eyes are sensitive, but it's great for astronomy. Well, that's the most important thing, right? Well, it can be. <laughs> Pretty soon, you know, all the cars are going to dry themselves anyway. So, so well, they don't need lights anyway, right? No. They could just turn the lights out and drive. All the better. Infrared infrared cameras and all this stuff. You don't need yeah, light. You just, just need drive, infrared lights. Drive in the dark, you know, infrared have lights. like your you know, have the big moon shield or window or something. Yeah. So you know, put those seat back all the way so you can look up at the stars yeah, while yeah, you're going yeah. to your next destination. <laughs> hey, there's no reason you couldn't have infrared headlights. If it's a camera That's right. based if it's a camera based uh driving system yeah elon if you're watching right now yeah. you know think about that let's go to let's go to star mode he's into stars right. and, and planets and stuff so he can try right. star mode to do infrared headlights yeah and your yeah. windshield because that windshield goes way back on a tesla right yeah, yeah. On some of their cars so yeah it'd be cool to sit back there and then have augmented reality you could have the constellation lines up there and all the rest of it hmm <laughs> well, that'd be an Martin Eastburn says, "Looks like Jerry and I have have blue eyes that are thin for the sun uh, to come through. We have yeah. to be cautious. My eyes are blue too. Yeah, yeah. Bluetooth? What'd you say? Your eyes are Bluetooth. Bluetooth. Yeah, you have Bluetooth <laughs> in your eyes. That's right. <laughs> Beatrice says, "Yeah, a vessel with a panorama deck to look up at the stars. That's right." Dreamers. Okay. <laughs> That's what we do here. So we dream well, up. You stuff. just come up with technology yeah. ideas for technology that Yeah, we're trying to we're trying to help out. we're trying to help out humanity here. So well, uh Jerry, what is uh um what's the hubbub with the universal uh oh, yeah, we've got we've got a uh I'm gonna say plethora. That's an interesting word. Plethora? A plethora of ideas plethora. to improve the system, right? Yes. And one that's been, well, and this has been a request for a long time, is to be able to uh, configure the Wi-Fi modules um, to connect to your wide area network to the internet directly. So you can connect the, and then you'd be able to use your computer connected to your wide area network and communicate with the PMC-8 instead of having the standalone dedicated uh, ad hoc network that you connect uh, your PC to directly. So that is a, that's always been a possibility. It was, it was on the back burner for a long time. Last year, I think uh, we worked with a couple of customers that worked out mm -hmm. the, the settings and also the procedure to do it. And I posted it on the forum a year and a half ago or something like that. But now we've implemented, uh, we'll, we'll be releasing this at some point. I don't, I don't want to say when, okay. It's soon. Soon. I could say within this next, within the next three months or better, you'll see this uh, plus some other things. Yep. Um, and I've actually, we've actually got it working pretty well right now, but we don't want to release it yet because we've got other things that we're trying to add in also. Uh, but, what this will allow you to do as a first cut is to allow you to, if you've decided to follow the procedure that I have, that I've released and manipulate the data and manipulate the configuration of the Wi-Fi module, 
and you just can't get it back to, to go back to the explore scientific settings. There's going to be a button that you're going to be able to hit. It's called restore RN131. And this is right now is applicable to the G11 and the XS2 legacy mounts with the microchip RN131 uh, Wi-Fi module, which okay. is pretty much um, all of them right now. They've, these are the ones that have been delivered already. We're going to be switching Wi-Fi modules to the ESP32 module with our next deliveries once we get those in stock and start delivering they'll have the new wi-fi module on them but i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead and share my my screen here share uh let's see here and what if you had the old module uh well this is for the old module right now that what we're working on but if you have the new module if it we're going to be adding this feature to the new module also but we haven't done that work yet. So that's why okay. we're kind of holding off yet to release it. So, um, what do you, so this is the beta version of the, of the uh, universal firmware configuration tool that includes this button here. It says restore RN131. You see that? Okay right here so if you configure it somehow and you goofed up then you just hit this button hit that button and it will and this it'll uh send the command that allows uh direct communications with the wi-fi module and then it'll send all the commands out to put it back the way it was that when we delivered it to you from uh oh, it's from like our, a factory reset it's a it's well see you got to be careful with that term because there's actually two factory resets and I'll okay explain that. the All real right. fact the real factory reset is the rn131 module factory reset okay all right that's a specific command okay and you could do that if you wanted to and you could do that and it would it would bring it back to default even before we that's the way we receive it from um and then we have to program it ourselves to put the ES. Oh, okay. So you don't want to do that. Unless... ES configuration. Although you could, you could reset it and then you could do this restore and it would put in the ES configuration. I'd rather call it an ES configuration restore. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Or the ES configuration on the, on the Wi-Fi module. So yeah, there's two levels of factory reset. One is from square one from microchip. And the other one is, is, I guess you could call it square two to the Explore Scientific configuration. Now I'm going to bring up this other display that'll show where we're also moving further on into the future with this. This mm -hmm. is just the first piece of it that I've got working right now. That actually works good. Um, where's my, I'm going to stop the share. I'm going to share this other screen, and what this will show you is what the what the display is going to look. I'm in, in the um, in the Visual Studio program that I use to develop the app. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's it. You see the uh, IDE. You're not sharing. Oh, it. I didn't share it yet. Okay, so this is the Visual Studio Development IDE um, integrated development environment is what IDE stands for. Okay. So you can see these other buttons here down at the bottom of the of the yeah. There's the restore RN131. That's the standard one. Then I've got then we're gonna allow you to do a custom configuration that'll be stored in a file. So you'll be able to okay. manipulate this file. All right, well, let, let's, let's just take a use case, um, if I'm understanding this correctly. Let's say that I have a backyard observatory and um, I've, got, I've got the uh, PMC-8 network straight into the internet, right? So yeah. um, because I want to just directly control it what, through an IP address or something? Yeah, um, so, and that's a little bit different than the standard control system, and I'll talk about that in a minute. 
Okay. Uh, the way the configuration works when you're in that mode. But then, but then I'm going to go, let's say I go to the Oki Tech Star Party and I want to take that mount that's in the observatory. So I yank that mount out, get my field tripod. And, but before, before I leave, I just, I restore it back to, um, you know, the, the, the way that it arrived to me. Okay. Yeah. Right. And then when I go back to my observatory, I could hit that custom yep. thing. Okay. Right. I like that. That's good. And you could put, and you could actually, if you know, if you have access to the network at the star party, you could create a configuration to connect to that wide area network. Oh, right. There's a few star parties that, that we're starting to do that. You know, I, I was, um, you know, I got to say I was a leader in offering, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a local area network, um, uh, because I had a, and this is before HughesNet kind of restricted where it was, where the dish was at. So oh, uh -huh. I had a, I had a big dish that I had on a, on a precision mount and we would go to a star party, we'd put up this big field tripod, hook this thing up, find a satellite. Okay. I, we, there was a little tool that we had and it would turn green when you got a satellite lined up and, um, and it worked out real cool, you know, oh, so, nice. um, uh, you know, and, um, but uh, there are some star parties where they do offer Wi-Fi, like the Texas Star Party does. Um, I don't know if Winter Star Party does at this time or not. Uh, they, those poor guys got really wiped out a few mm -hmm. years ago uh, by a hurricane, and so they're still rebuilding up the infrastructure of all of that. Um but there's probably others that offer uh, free Wi-Fi to to people out there. Yes. So uh, so there's another couple other buttons here in some fields. So so up, update SSID. So there was a specific request to be able to change the password and and SSID value, right? I think it was uh, Wade Prunty that talked about that, right? Right. Uh, so this feature will be available also as a dedicated button. You'll be able to type whatever the SSID you want and whatever password you want and hit the update. And that will be in the configuration of the, uh, of the Wi-Fi module. Cool. These are nice features. Yeah. Powerful features. Actually. Yeah. So we're, yeah, we're able to, we, based on the work that we did previous, to turn on and what makes this possible is we can turn on we have both the wi-fi and the serial port available to connect to at the same time so that allows us to do this kind of thing um in the with the firmware the way it's configured the way we have it now uh, so that's that's coming that's coming soon to a to a store near you no <laughs> Yeah, to a download near to near a download you. near you. We'll we'll announce it on the forum and also uh, uh, in general on the on our website. All right. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Good. Are there Good. any questions about that from anybody? No. Uh, Peck is on his journey to uh, try to photograph Pluto, and he wanted to know if you could just photograph it and. The short answer is yeah, it, you, yeah, definitely within the reach of an, a, an amateur it's telescope, just, maybe even like as little of, of aperture as a four inch, I think. Right, exactly. you can, you it. can uh, it'll look like a star, of course, and you may see Sharon, which is the moon of, if you've got a high enough resolution imaging, mm -hmm. maybe see the moon and, uh, and Pluto next to each other. Um, it's going to look like a star. It's not going to look like a planet because it's, yeah, so, it's, far away. it's so far away. That's and you'll fair. have to do a plate solve or do a, a to identify it. Right. Um, but other than that, you can photograph it for sure. Like, like Clyde Tombaugh did back in the thirties. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Go through that whole process just like Clyde did, mm -hmm. but do it the manual way. Right. Oh yeah. Do a blink. Don't cheat with the plate solve. Okay. Right. Do a blink thing and identify the planet yeah right um chris hansen uh commented that the, the, the software looks really nice so cool nice 
Well, uh, it is storming outside uh, here in Arkansas. Um, we had, uh, sometimes when we get lightning storms around here, I lose the internet momentarily. So if that happens and you're the only guy still on, Jerry, then you'll I'll know that that's the, what happened. I'll have to carry the load. You'll have to carry the load. That's right. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't think I have anything more to add right now. Um, uh, I did mention Annie will be on... Uh, well, she, maybe I didn't mention this, but she will be back on, on Wednesday and uh, she'll be giving updates for Explorer Alliance members. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, any, any new benefits that we have and, and we, we have something new coming up all the time. So, mm -hmm. so that's it as far as I, I know. Is there anything else that you'd like to add, Jerry? Any? No, I think uh, I, wanna, I wanna thank Wes again publicly public publicly publicly <laughs> publicly because he is a he's a driver he's a he's a customer advocate and yeah. working with me directly on getting these features installed sooner rather than later oh i see well that's good so that's what that's what wes's job is mm -hmm. <laughs> he does a lot of he does he a lot of work on you <laughs> he does yeah he does a lot of work too he he does what he does is he he gets it 90 you know 80 to 90 percent figured out and then he then he pings on me all we got to do is this this and that he said yeah that's that's cool yeah it, it probably wouldn't be that yeah, it's much a cool. simple matter of programming simple right matter of programming that's right yep. and then he mm -hmm. says well i've already figured out the firmware so go ahead and do the driver or the ufct <laughs> so that's how that's well, how that's it gets cool done. that's how it gets that's done I, I, I mean if I didn't have anything else to work on, that's that's what I would be doing. But I do right. have some other things to do, so it's kind of delayed. Right. Oh, very cool. Mm -hmm. Well, I like I like this because, you know, all the firmware and and controlling software and stuff is now maturing, uh, which is great. And now we can tweak. You know, we can tweak right. what we need to right. tweak. And right? I think we can we can actually add some new to the industry features that that uh, we're first first out of the box with i think um what's that i Say think that we're, i think we're adding we're starting to add features now that are that are new to the industry in terms of the functionality oh absolutely and absolutely we, can start, I mean, we did uh, not we did not have lots of the features um you know meat instruments did not have those things and uh the thing i really um and I feel very, very good about is, uh, you know, we are uh, allowing uh, the user to configure and adjust the system to where to how they want to do it, you know, so right, right. Um, and you might need help, you know, to 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 do all that. I mean, with with uh, with freedom and flexibility could come lots of complexity, That's you know, right. based because, on right how you want to do that. And you've mentioned it several times to me privately, Jerry, that, uh, you know, maybe we opened it up too much, but, um, but, uh, you well, know, it's, it's really makes it, uh, it, the system is so flexible that it's sometimes it's hard to figure out which way you want to go because right. there's maybe more than one way to, to skin the cat basically. Yeah. But with something like this new feature on the universal configuration tool, you can go back to the way you received it with a button press. That's nice. Yeah. Or yeah. you could save off something that you was working for you before and go back to that, you know? So, yes. right. so you have the freedom to really go and play and, um, you know, configure it to, we, we don't know how you're, you want to, to do that. So, uh, but, um, your successes you can save and when you need to go back, you can go back without, you know, something really convoluted and right. hard to it, do. So it makes the uh, anxiety go way down when you know you can recover it. You can just right. try all kinds of things and experiment with it. That's right. Pekka says my MSRO experience went uh, went to was as <laughs> to be a costly history. I'm upgrading my remote observatory weekly now. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Today, I was redrawing all cables and getting a better fan. Yeah, well, that's right. That's good. Continuous improvement. Continuous, Continuous improvement learning. program. 
Yeah, continuous learning. That's right. Well, great. Well, um, it's kind of a shorter program today, but uh, uh, we want to thank everybody for watching. And um, uh, we are, by the way, we are, we are also, uh, uh, you know, delivering this program on a, the Open Go to Facebook page. Okay, mm -hmm. um, and. Um, you know, so if you're so inclined to want to uh, visit that page, it's pretty easy to find. Um, in fact, let me share my screen. I'll find it for you. Did you share the link I put out on the uh, star that is oh, no. going to come past? So I've, I'll do I've got that. a Wikipedia link that you can share for everybody if they're interested in understanding more about I'll it. I'll do that right now. Here we go. Glee's 710. It's about to become your new best friend. That's right. It's uh, it's going to bring a bunch of buddies with him from the Oracle. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It'll be raining <laughs> comments like crazy. Um, yeah, anybody can become a comment hunter at that point. That's right. Harold Locke says, very interesting, and I'm a dreamer, and someday I'll get my ES mount through OPR. That's right. Okay, here we go. Let's find our. There it is. It's a it's a page called um, the PMC eight and the open go to community. Uh, so it's if you just want to find it on Facebook, it's the at sign at PMC eight. Um, but let's share my screen. Is that with E-I-G-H-T? E-I-G-H-T, that's right. So that's what it looks oh, like. Okay. And there's, <laughs> yeah, there's Tyler holding his nose. Yeah, that's Perfect. good. <laughs> it's been stinky that day or something. I don't know. Yeah, it's funny how the how and that's us broadcasting grab, live, so. It's funny how the videos grab snapshots of people when they're in the worst, you know, <laughs> yeah, I love it. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I think that's that's all we have today. Um, until that, oh, Harold Locke says OPT, not OPR. Beatrice says the questions for the for the contest of ES shows have always been great due to the reason you have to look things up. You learn a lot of new, interesting stuff. Oh yeah. That's true. That's the reason why we do them like that. So, yep. and that's exactly how I come up with the questions. I'll go out and start looking for something and find something interesting like this and say, Oh, that's yeah. a good question. Martin Eastburn said, Tyler is about to take a plunge in deep water. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's a good way of looking at that. Yeah. Yeah, much better than smelling something stinky. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. Anyhow, all right. Uh, what else have we got coming up? Pretty soon, next month, we've got the Texas Star Party. Um, uh, so we are going to, we will be broadcasting Texas Star Party also on our Facebook channel. Um, and um, what else? When's the Nebraska Star Party? Isn't that in August? Is that when it is? Yeah, apparently that is are still you gonna, a go. Are you going to broadcast that one too? You know, I'm going to talk to John Johnson. I don't know if they have a way of doing uh, any kind of live stuff from there. It's pretty oh, remote. I see. Uh, Nebraska Star Party is August 1st through the 6th, 2021. That's only two months away. It is. Yeah. So it's that, that's it, going to be a live I don't know event. Any other big star party? Well, I guess Okie Tex is still happening. I think there's three or four of them happening this year in the United States. So they're going to be live. Or are you going to be able to go there and, or is it virtual? Uh, those are live ones where you, you know okay, in person good. kind of. Good, good. Yeah, they might also be virtual as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, but uh, when I first started talking about this article that I had read. 
about um, you know how the pandemic has kind of changed people in the in the workplace. Uh, this particular article was um, husband and wife team. Uh, you know that you know they were their their schedules were being controlled by work instead of by them. You know which is um, so they basically uh, both quit their jobs and uh, starting up started up their own. Um, uh, landscaping service because they were, I think they were both into gardening or something, but, uh, oh. you know, so, but, uh, yeah, uh, I think that a lot of people, um, kind of evaluated, uh, what was going on in their lives and are choosing to do things that are important to them, you know, enriching to them. Mm-hmm. And so that's, that's the deal, but, uh, yeah. And you can do that in any age folks, you know, so, you just have to have the courage to do it. I think that's part of it. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I get, you know, everybody has responsibilities to uh, family and themselves and all of that. And, and, so, and sometimes you do have to do things, um, you know, where you sacrifice uh, and, and that's, that's very honorable, very worthy, you know, but, you should also sacrifice to make yourself happy, you know? So, uh, that's, um, I guess in our constitution, something about the pursuit of happiness, yeah. you know, right. is actually in there, you know? So, <laughs> um, but you know, there's all kinds of, uh, uh, benefits to being happy, including being healthier and lower medical bills and all of that stuff, you know? So, so anyhow, I will, uh, Becca, can I send a life-size paper model of me so you can take can take that with you on these live outdoor events so I will virtually join it? (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, maybe we do. Yeah, I I am fold Pekka out there. Yeah, here's Pekka. He's he's here. (laughs) Well, it's like when you went to Neef and I was a virtual head on a a computer. Oh, that's right. That's right. I will definitely, I'm going to do more of that kind of stuff, you know, (laughs) so I'm able to, you know. You walked me around the the Neef show talking to people and I said hello and talked to people. Yeah, hi, how are you? As a a talking head. Yeah, it was fun. Wonderful. Uh, What's up tomorrow? Friday is, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, microcosmos. voyages and uh, we will definitely have a show for that and as i mentioned then we got the weekend so monday we will be closed no broadcast um uh you know it's it's a memorial day weekend uh people all over everywhere i guess will be barbecuing so i mean as a vegetarian maybe i barbecue an ear of corn or something so yes and honoring our veterans too that's right that's right All right. Take care, everyone, and uh, keep looking up. We'll see you. Bye-bye. Hi, I'm Kent Martz with Explore Scientific. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Explore Scientific Bino Viewers. First thing to know is the Bino Viewers can slide back and forth to adjust the interpupillary distance for your eyes. I suggest that you use them first, look through until you get emerged and slide it back and forth to get it merged into an image that's comfortable for, comfortable for your eyes. Set them aside, and in this case, we're using the Explore Scientific FCD100 127 millimeter carbon fiber telescope. Using an eyepiece, find the object, you're looking for in the sky and get into focus. And the beauty is this is a parfocal device, meaning we can simply remove the eyepiece, put the device in, being sure to put the diopter side on your right eye. Be sure and tighten down the thumb screw so it won't fall out. Get a matched pair of eyepieces, in this case, the Explore Scientific waterproof 52 degree 25 millimeter eyepieces. Loosen the twist lock, eyepiece locks, tighten it down 
so the eyepiece won't come out. Eyepieces, that eyepiece is not locked down. Now it is because the diopter was turning. Now then, just adjust until the object you're looking at is in focus. The reason you're closing one eye, covering it, is when you close one eye, it causes the other eye to, to misshape. If you cover one eye and then look through it, it really helps the eye really look in focus. Now, with it in focus for the left eye, we're gonna cover our left eye and look through the right diopter and turn it. And as we turn it, we're gonna get into where it's perfect focus for our right eye. Now, you should have the focus for your left eye with the telescope and your right eye with the diopter adjustment. You can look through, make a fine adjustment for the interpupillary distance, check the focus. If the focus is on, you're good to go. You now have a bino view. You're using two eyes to look at the same object, which is the way our minds are engineered. To have two eyes looking at the object, you're gonna be able to see a lot more detail. It's gonna be a lot more pleasing view and you're going to get a whole lot more out of your viewing experience. That's how you use the Explore Scientific Bino Viewers. I'm Kent Mars with Explore Scientific. You can find these products on our website, www.explorescientific.com. Note that the Bino Viewers are an exclusive membership benefit of the Explore Alliance. The Explore Alliance is a care program offered by Explore Scientific. For information, go to our website, Click on Alliance, drop down, and go from there.